Welcome to Brood Awakening. Grab a coffee and get ready to awaken real, tangible, and lasting results through this podcast. I have a question for you. Do you have a to-do list? Of course you do. It's hard to survive without it. This is the transactional part of your life. The more empowering question is this. Do you have a to-be list? This is the transformational part of your life. In this podcast, we will discuss topics that will inspire you to become the great person you were destined to be. The circumstances you find yourself in today do not determine where you will be tomorrow. So grab a copy, awaken the transformation within you. I'm Robert. And I'm Ruth. It's time for your Ruth Ruth Awakening. Awakening. Vaughn to our podcast, the Brood Awakening Podcast. We are really excited to have Vaughn Galt on our show with us tonight, and she is from the Pacific Coast of Seattle. That, well, works, yeah. that works for us because we live not too far away. Yes, we oh, love, love yeah. Seattle. <laughs> so wow. And why don't you first tell us, I know that we have so many things to talk about, but why don't you first tell us just a little bit about you and who you are and, and then we'll go, I have a, a big question for you to explain to the listeners immediately, but why don't you just first tell us just a little bit about you? Okay. Um, just in short, um, you know, I, I, I kind of got thrown into this whole conversation of awakening, ascension, and the fifth dimension um, from my Buddhist upbringing. And I usually just kind of reserve to myself, but um, as I was doing a lot of this interesting research for my own amusement, it kind of birthed out a couple Buddhism books. <laughs> so that's, <laughs> it, kind of, it kind of happens like that when you do something for your own personal enjoyment and you just keep following the rabbit, you know, the, the, the rabbit hole, the trail all the way down. It just, you, you, you accumulate so much information that you're like, I have to get rid of this. <laughs> nice. That's yes. right. And you popped out a few of them. <laughs> a few of them so um some 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 quick little background again as you said i'm von galt and um basically i i was born into the spiritual tradition of buddhism Mm -hmm. um i'm very familiar with many of the other forms but i just call it all buddhism because it is all the same right and um you know i was born into it through my laotian upbringing and um about 20 years ago, what I started to do was I started to follow an initiative um, from like the Dalai Lama and many Buddhist monks and nuns worldwide to go into academia and participate and and provide themselves as a resource to academia to study the effects of mindfulness, consciousness, um, and meditation. And, Mm -hmm. you know, kind of explore um, is the stuff that Buddhist, the philosophy has been talking about for almost 2,600 years, going all the way back further in time into the Vedas of Hinduism, um, which goes back like 7,000 or more years, right. um, is the stuff that we talk about, like how much of it um, will actually stand the test of time? How much of it will, um, you know, be compatible with the modern science that we have today um, right. around these topics? Yeah. And, um, and how much of it the mysticism in the the ancient philosophies, how much of it can be clarified? Because there are some areas that are a little bit vague, um, and so we want to clarify it. Right. And so I was following the work for uh, um, all these different universities and institutions um, in this collaboration. And what ended up happening was I had gotten so much content to actually scientifically prove my childhood understanding of Buddhist mandalas, um, which, which is most every religion, worldwide religion has sacred geometry symbols in their theology, whether it's the Sri Yantra in Hinduism, the yin yang symbol in Zen, um, whether it's um, the Star of David in Ju- Judaism or many other forms, they all have sacred geometry. Um, and what I found through the 20 years of scientific research and putting these pieces together, because I just love this, the art history of it in Buddhism. Um, what I found is that 
all these traditions speak of the same thing, which is that what they're speaking about is about your Merkaba. It's about your- Explain that for us. Yes, and I would definitely explain that. And um, so I am able to put all the scientific information to show that every single person has um, a Merkaba. And all these different religions are talking about the same thing, which is, um, a Merkaba is like a Jewish word for your aura field, your human aura field. Okay. okay your chakras, your aura field, your, um, the energy that you are. And basically in Buddhism and many Eastern philosophies that I grew up with, um, every single person is having, they are a soul having a human experience. Okay, you are not your bodies. These are just your sins for your own personal spiritual development and for your own personal amusement within the game, the infinite game of physicality that we souls like to play. But every, (laughs) and there's scientific evidence for every single thing that I say. I don't say it without scientific evidence um, because a lot of ancient, um, topics in Buddhism and these other forms of Eastern philosophy, um, they start sounding like story, but when you can back it up with science, it becomes real. Right. Wow. And, it's, and, and it's universal to everybody. So you nobody are, owns spirituality. You are a total wealth of information. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it's really interesting that you say that everything you say is backed by science. That's very, very uh, I guess, reassuring to so many people, right? And, mm-hmm. you know, one of my mentors, I love what he always says, because he says, you are a creative and compassionate spiritual being currently living in a physical form. And that's what you're really saying, because right. mm-hmm. you're a soul, you're just, you just have a body, but you are a soul. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of what you're saying. That is exactly what I'm saying, and that's exactly what the scientific material that backs up much of the metaphysical and mystic understanding that Buddhism has and many, many other spiritual traditions worldwide have. They just have different ways to explaining it. Right. Um, but um, basically, a Merkaba, and I sent you a picture of my Merkaba, so we can show that in just a little bit, so I'll show everybody what, what that looks like, okay. but, which is so exciting. I was so excited to see that, but um, everyone has a Merkaba. Everyone has an energy field. Okay, right. before, and, you go on, before you go on, can you spell that? Um, yes, yeah, so there's, there's a couple of different f- ways of spelling it. There's M-E-R-K-A-B-A, so Merkaba, which yeah. it is translated as mer means um, light, ka means spirit, and ba means body. So it's your oh. your spirit's light body. Nice okay, your Merkaba. In Judaism, <laughs> they have the H at the end. Okay. So Merkaba, yeah. um, or Merkaba is what they say. Uh-huh. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I don't get too tied up on like the the yeah. terms. I just get the concept. So, um, but Merkaba. So everyone has a Merkaba, and it is your aura field. Yeah. And they found this in science that every single person has an aura field. Um, what they've also found is that um, your aura field is going to be different. Everyone has a different energy level in their aura field. Yes. Absolutely, yeah. So, so and, and they have found this in science in researching. Actually, Dr. Um, David R. Hawkins of the Map of Consciousness, he was the number one mental health hosp- um, doctor during his medicine years. And he spent uh, about 40 or 50 years of his life studying um, the Map of Consciousness and maybe mapping out the different energy level that different people emit different animals and different things and it's wonderful work that he does in kinesiology to measure this person what is their energy field this person what's the energy field all the way up to buddhahood or nirvana in buddhism is what we call it which is a thousand and um we can actually see what that looks like as well in your Merkaba. So let me just give you a quick understanding of what everybody's Merkaba is and what all these religions have been trying to tell you, but we got so caught up in these terms and these stories that we forget the basics. 
the basics is that, like I said, we are all souls, infinite before this life and after this life. Right. Um, infinite. So everybody goes to the same place, okay? But that's a whole different topic of the spirit world. But um, and I'm just writing it all down, so I'm not looking. Oh, at it. <laughs> just enjoy the information. But anyways, so everybody's infinite before and afterwards. So you don't have the journey anywhere. But the difference is that um, everybody's soul is incarnating in Buddhism. You've incarnated into your physical sim in the infinite game to play this game. And all um, beings that incarnate on earth have the same playing field, meaning that they are not going to have any memory of what lifetimes they had before this life, the past past lives, future lives, and the lives that they had in between lives, like, you know, their spirit world, they come with amnesia. So everybody has an even playing field. And this is, this is the thing with Buddhism, because people come in with amnesia so that they can level at the same rate, they don't know what they're working with. And so we're kind of trying to figure it out together, but we have no clue that, you know, you may have had this experience, that experience, you may be at this level spiritually, this level spiritually, whatever. And so we're kind of helping each other out with a little bit of amnesia. But what they found in scientific studies is that everyone has an energy field and that energy field is a little bit different. And um, in Buddhism, and this is my book, Buddhist Mandalas, Explore Parallel Realities with Sacred Geometry. In Buddhism, we have um, the philosophy of the master teacher. The teacher that has woken up to the game and have ascended and leveled up their energy all the way up to Buddhahood. Um, and so they're kind of a mas they've mastered the game a bit. They kind of know that they know the game pieces and they know how to play the game. Right. And um, and you see this in Buddhist mandalas where um, all the master teachers will have a halo around their head. You see this in Jesus' picture as well and, and Moses and all the other avatars. And you'll have a huger halo around your body. And they found this in science that the brain actually emits out an energy field that looks like a circle. And your heart emits out an energy field yeah. that's five times, 5,000 times stronger than your head. So there's the other aura field. Right. Okay. And so I'm not going to go into all the science of all the different religions that talk about, you know, the Sri Yantra being that or the yin yang or um, the star of David or anything else like that. But it's all speaking about your Merkaba. And the thing with your Merkaba is your Merkaba is your soul's vessel that will carry you between one parallel reality to another parallel reality. And you know that you are um, traveling between parallel realities when all of a sudden you have your own personal Mandela effects, such as um, there's the fun stuff like logos, like, you know, childhood logo bearing steam bearing stain bears. Um, you know, when you went to the grocery store, has it always been Fibrazy for the you know, fabric softener uh, or, or the um, air freshener, or was it Febreze? You know, those kind of nuances. Has it always been Jif peanut butter or is it Jiffy peanut butter, like Jiffy and Skippy? You know, those fun little things to go to kind of wake you up, like, wait a minute. And then when you talk to somebody and they're like, it's always been like that. And you're like, wait a minute. So those are kind of a little bit of the universe kind of shaking you up a little bit, going, okay. But um, as you get more into your awakening, you're going to have your own personal Mandela effects where um, the shrubbery in your neighbor's yard, which once was barren, is now full. The tree that all of a sudden is an ancient tree that's been around for a very long time in your neighborhood, and you don't ever remember it being there, and you've lived there for 30 years. Uh -huh. Those kind of nuances that make question, what's going on? or even parallel people where maybe somebody in your family has an accident in one leg, but you remember vividly, because you were there, that they had the accident in the other leg. So you're just having these, you know, Mandela effects or personal parallel reality um, 
experiences and you're wondering what's going on the reason <laughs> this is good it gets really fantastic but the reason why i am having these kind of interviews is because people are getting woken up Right. And they're getting woken up very fast, and they're not prepared for this stuff. And so I've been studying it my whole life um, through Buddhism and done my own personal um, journey and, and tracking of the like, changes in my reality. But I never thought that people were going to, other people and mass amounts of people were going to have these experiences. And um, now that more and more people are having experiences, it may be time to kind of give a Buddhist perspective. Not, you know, there's many perspectives, but this is a Buddhist perspective. That's fair. No, yeah. Yeah. So why don't you right now tell us a little bit about some of your own experiences? Like, what have you seen as a parallel reality or, or dimension? Yeah. What, what, what are some things that you can just relate, have us relate to? Okay. Well, the Mandela Effect ones are very, very fun. So um, do you remember the... Um, Jane Goodall, the um, conservationist who um, in England who works with monkeys. Oh, I, I know who you mean. Yes, yeah. yeah. Jane Goodall. Jane Goodall. Do you remember um, if she passed away? When she passed away? No. You don't remember when she passed away? No. So many people remember when she passed away. They and and they actually watch documentaries and Facebook and Twitter posts and read articles about her passing away. She's alive now and she's doing fundraisers, which is really giving setting a lot of people back because they remember those the the funeral. Wow. Same thing with um they they call it Mandela effects because many people remember Nelson Mandela died in prison. Yeah. And many also people remember that Mandela became president of South Africa and died many couple years ago. And so um, you have those nuances. So you have these different memories, but for personal stuff, I've had plenty of personal stuff where um, I will have a conversation with somebody and they will tell me about their children. And I remember them having three children and they only have two. Oh. And I'm looking at sure on their desk of their children and the part with the crack picture was the part where there was the third child oh, I see. yeah so i've also had experiences where i would talk to somebody about their car did you did you um ever sell that Volkswagen? and they said no i've always driven um my sob so the, the version that is driving the higher luxury car has less children. The one that's driving the Volkswagen has more children. So those kind of nuances as well, it's really kind of funny. Um, but, and I've also had parallel experiences with people as well. And some of my friends, they're in this space as well. And yeah. so you know, we will look for information. Like I remember taking that picture. Um, to prove that this was not here before, it was something else, and they go through the picture album, they cannot find it, but everybody else remembers the same exact thing. We start questioning each other just to make sure that we're not giving away the clues, yep. and so it's almost kind of a game to see how much a reality of your previous parallel reality that you were at last, how much of it do you remember? And how much of it is the same? Are you from that version or are you from this version? Or, you know, kind of try, how are we navigating um, these different realities? But this is happening because of two phenomenons. Um, okay. In Buddhism, we call it awakening and ascension. Right. Okay. okay. So let me uh, give a basic understanding of an awakening. Um, an awakening is basically someone who realizes that they exist in a holographic reality that is responding to the commands of its user. So which, which results in a conscious creating of your reality, both individually and collectively. Okay. Oh, so to, you, you need to repeat that for me. Oh, okay. Uh, um, we can watch this again too. <laughs> yeah, nice. um, it's, it's awakening is someone who realizes that they exist in a holographic reality okay. 
okay. that is responding to the commands of its user. So your perspectives that you have on things is what changes your energy field and shifts you into a parallel reality that matches that new frequency that mm -hmm. you, you radiate at. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, like I said, everybody has a Merkaba. Yeah, or uh, a, a Buddhist mandala, um, and everybody's Merkaba is going to be a little bit different. So I actually sent you a picture of what my Merkaba looks like. I just got, I just got it back from um, Cymoscope. So Cymoscope, I've been following their research for, for fifteen years, and um, they do sound research for medical and science. Yes. Um, but they have offered their um, service to the public. So now everyone can go and see what their Merkaba looks like. If you go to the website, soundmadevisible.com. Soundmadevisible.com. Right there. Sorry. <laughs> My mom job just walked in. That's fine. <laughs> Sammy, come on. Mommy's on a book interview. Close the door. <laughs> that's, the door. that's good. That's good. People like to see, that. They like to see it when it's natural and and uh, everything happens as we it have, should. And we have granddaughters too. Yeah, they don't care. No, no, no. <laughs> Anyways, um, so, so soundmadevisible.com, um, the engineers at Cymoscope, they developed this system. And now all anybody has to do is um, they have a service, I think is $144 now. And you send in a recording of your voice and they put it into um, a Cymoscope machine and um, it prints out what your Merkaba looks like. Nice. So, um, and everybody has a unique one. And um, like in Buddhism for a very long time, what we would do is um, the monks and nuns would use singing bowls with water. Yeah. And they would put the chants or, or try to speak the, the frequency or harmonics into it. And it would show, um, you know, what the mandala looked like. And they would try to mark it really quick. But now, fast forward into the scientific age, we have beautiful technology that does this so much cleaner and nicer, easier. Right. So, um, so I sent my voice in to, to be like, I want to know how spiritually advanced and how complex or not complex my Merkaba is. I want to see what I know what my sim looks like. I'm an Asian woman in this lifetime. I know, and I, I have, um, I do a lot of past life, life between life and future life regression and spirit oral regression through a, um, a form of hypnosis that I can talk about a little bit later yeah. that I had discovered through my 20 years of research into these different topics. But um, I sent my voice in and this is what Cymoscope sent back as to what my Merkaba looks like. Awesome. Do you have it to... I, I emailed it to you. Yeah, I, okay. I have I a copy of it. it yeah. Awesome. I want to see it. You have it. You want to hold up or? I, I I actually printed it off and it printed off in black and white. So it's... okay, let me. I'm gonna op I'm gonna open up the email. Yes. Do. Yes. Sure. Um. Let me Love see. To see it. Yeah. Were you Were you um surprised or were you excited? Or are you happy with it or what did you think when you got it back? Well, I was like, I was, um, oh wait, disable host sharing. Okay, I'm going to share. It says host disable attendee screen sharing. Okay, I'm going to disable that. Uh, Can I share the screen? I don't know. Just a sec here. Can I share screen? Or if you go into the email that I sent you, good thing yeah. that this is pre-recorded. <laughs> so, yeah, that's right. If you go to the email I sent you, the image is in the, the recent email. Do you, do you know what I can? I actually can. Uh, I can put that in there. I'll put it on top of where we're talking, and she, Ruth, could go and look at it right now. So I'm just gonna go look. So it's in your email under where? Um, right there. Yeah, and it's the one that's V Galt Wisdom Color. There you go. Oh yes. Yeah. Right. So that's my Merkaba. And I was like, wow, that's amazing. I love it. It's beautiful. So the interesting thing about my Merkaba is you can see that um, my energy field, um, lifetime after lifetime, is this, is this Merkaba. Wow. And well, basically, you're saying this goes through every lifetime because this is your, your soul, your real Merkaba that just goes with you forever. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And as in Buddhism, as you um, spiritually age or as you develop, yes. spiritually, um, your Merkaba 
um, holds more information and it kind of condenses and it um, it comes to its own form. And so everybody is kind of their their aura field um, is. It's kind of like a snowflake. There is no two that are the same, and every right. single one is a, li a little bit different and unique from another. Yeah. And so um, as you level your frequency up the, the different levels of consciousness all the way through nirvana and beyond, you start developing your Merkaba into something much more complex, much more much more dense, and, it, um, and much more beautiful. And all of them are beautiful, by the way. Mm -hmm. But my Merkaba that you see here on the screen the thing that I was very shocked about is my Merkaba is actually the symbology of Buddhism itself. Is it? Yeah, it is. Um, the The rods that you see there, the eight rods in the center, that is the wheel of Dharma. Okay. And if you see on the end of the spokes of each, each one of those rods, that is, um, it looks like a lion's face. Yeah, yeah. In, in the, the Buddhist symbol, a Buddhism is the eight wheel, um, eight rod wheel of Dharma, which represents um, you coming back lifetime after lifetime to experience different things. And it's not always bad. Sometimes some people come back to experience positive experiences as well. But this, it's just a samsara. It's just a coming back to play the game a little bit more. Right. But that's what it represents. And each time they show the wheel of Dharma, they always show um, lions at the gate or lions that accompany the wheel of Dharma. And my Merkaba has... Um, and it's funny because I actually looked at what a, a lion's face, just to see if there's any similarity. It looks exactly like a lion's face, <laughs> so, which is really funny. So I love animals. I'm like, yay, my Merkaba has animals. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it has lion's face. And then the thing about my Merkaba, my energy field um, in science, is that I am a 12-fold geometry. I'm what they call a dodecagon. And in Buddhism, a 12-fold geometry is um, the 12 Ninandas, which is a basic uh, list of characteristics in Buddhism. It's the foundation of Buddhism. So my Merkaba basically is the embodiment of Buddhism. Okay, so where are you finding the 12? I'm just so it's 12 layers. So all those different oh, lines re okay. resemble a layer. Okay. Right, okay. Wow. Mm -hmm. wow. Yeah. And everybody has a different one. Um, the the engineers at Simonscope they have their their image as well, and they're beautiful. I think the un engineer who his name is James, his um, his actually has like the Star David in his. So um, everybody's a little bit different. So it will be fun to see the interesting thing if you two get your Merkaba's image to see um, your own energetic image of what you look like in the cosmos. The funny thing is couples typically, especially if they really are in sync with each other and they jive, just their Merkabas look very similar to each other. You're compatible on an energetic level. Right. Wow. Yeah, yeah, so it's really, really fun. I'm waiting for my husband's because I'm like, hmm, I want to see. <laughs> I want to see. We're waiting for his. So, well, you so think it's a lot of fun. Similar? What's that? You think yours and your husband's will be similar? I, you know what, I have, I have done um, past life regression and my husband and I have been married in many lifetimes. Okay. So even if it's not exactly the same, it, there's, they're going to be in the same complexity. Yeah, yeah. So um, and we'll still be married. <laughs> we have before many lifetimes. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, but yeah, so that's the Merkaba. So, you know, everybody can go and take a look and use that service and get their exact Merkaba. So, so if you don't believe it, it you can see it. How long does it take to do that process? Um, well, you know, I, you, you fill out the order form online, which is, you know, any, it's a simple e-commerce site. And then it takes them about a week or, or so, depending on um, their bandwidth, to image it. Okay. Um, you know, it kind of just depends on the order volume that they have. Yeah. So, so they'll image it and then they'll send you um, four different screenshots of your Merkaba. Like that one right there um, of mine, when I say my name, Vaughn, that's the image of Vaughn. Okay. Okay. Wow. So when you say Ruth, you have a specific image for Ruth right. and Robert. 
So that, so my voice saying my name makes a Buddhist mandala. <laughs> so it's really funny. But so it's really fun. Um, but yeah, so they're going to give you a couple of different options. Like, you know, when you say Om, which is the, the word uh, for the Lord, Om. Um, when you say Om or when you say Ooh, you know, they'll give you kind of this is what that looks like yeah. um, in semantics. And then you can pick which one you want and then what color you want to overlay. So oh. I love purple and blue. So yeah, I picked I that color. color. Yeah. <laughs> but they have different colors you choose from uh, um, if you have a kind of a color scheme in your house. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Right. But um, they're lots of fun, and you can also get them done for your children. And many families' merkabas are very similar. Yeah. So you can kind of have a family portrait of merkabas. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So, anyways, uh, moving on beyond yeah. our merkabas, yeah. so everybody can go and see your merkaba and see how spiritually developed your energy field is. Yeah. And the the reason why. Um, their energy field and you can also use um, like kinesiology um, to kind of measure somebody's energy field in the map of consciousness as well uh, David David uh, R. Hawkins um, he, he speaks about that method as well and um, and that's what they do to measure the energy field when they're picking out you know who the next Dalai Lama is or who the next Kamala is they don't just right. they in 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 Asia um, in order to get into these positions, it's not political. It's based off of your energy field. We do right. we do gamma wave meditation. The, the monks and nuns meditate on it to try to geolocate the energy field of the next, you know, high frequency individual or teacher in the area. Yes. And then um, they measure their field of consciousness. So Dr. Hawkins um, was called many times to kind of measure the energy field to make sure that they got the right person. Okay. Oh, wow. So yeah, and so that's how you. And so if they don't get the right person, then they just wait for that person to be born. Ah. So um, it's kind of like the golden, the golden child. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, that's a fun movie. But but yeah, so you you have to have a high energy field. You have to have a high merkaba. Um, and when I saw my merkaba, I was just delighted and just just so happy because my whole life, um, you know, I was raised in monasteries my mom helps fund a lot of monasteries and helps fund a lot of um, artwork in monasteries in Laos I've had every time I go into a monastery um, many of the senior monks would stop in the middle of their chant um, with a room full of people and they would stop in the middle of the chant and let the other student monks carry on because they were trying to figure out who just walked in the door and oftentimes it was my, my family and we're like, oh, we're just going to sit down and, you know, do our thing. And I've had many times they asked me, do you want to come up and teach something? And I said, no. <laughs> so, um, and I would just, you know, just carry on just being a um, participant. And many times they're like, do you know who you are? And I'm like, no, I'm just a girl. <laughs> so, so it was funny. And so the monks, um, the in the monasteries that I grew up in are delighted to find out that I finally realized, um, you know, who you I am yeah. and the knowledge that I bring um, to everyone as well, that they also can level up and have beautiful Merkabas themselves. Wow. So, um, mm -hmm. so it, yeah, but, mm -hmm. but the thing about, here's the thing about your um everybody's merkaba is when you have your awakening and you realize that your soul having a human experience and you realize that consciousness is what creates reality okay um then reality is a little bit more fluid right okay and depending on how your perspective on things that will change your frequency so here is the thing in buddhism um when it comes to raising your frequency we call it ascension so these are not new age buzzwords awakening and ascension in the fifth dimension they're very ancient terms that have gotten popularity but ascension is basically um raising your energetic frequency by living the best version of you. Mm, yeah. So, yes. 
Yes, I really think everybody's been talking about. It. So as as a result, you positively affect yourself and those around you, and by leveling up your Merkaba to Christ consciousness, um, it activates your six senses as you work towards Nirvana. So as you work on your spiritual development and you level up um, to higher and higher frequencies. Excuse me. What's that, Sammy? Sammy, you're not supposed to interrupt me. I'm in a book interview. Okay. <laughs> All right. Close the door. See? See? I am a mom. <laughs> well, what a blessing that is, too. Yes. <laughs> so, um, anyways, um, as, as, I was, as I was saying, so um, in Buddhism, as you level up, your energy level and you get further into your awakening process and level up your energy in your ascension process you are going to activate six senses some people right um but they come in a little bit slow because remember this is all a holographic reality and it's a game for the consciousness and they have found science and this this really backs up a lot of the mystic beliefs in buddhism and many asian traditions like hinduism and zen and all that they found in science um there's a really good book called buddha's brain by dr rick hansen and mm-hmm. what they found is that um when they put brain scans eeg brain scans on people um and they have an, put on another person person is the one who's getting um seeing images painful images or getting inflicted with pain both participants brains light up the same exact way as if both of them are getting the wounds and getting the pain so even if you yourself are not getting inflicted by negativity and the pain and the hurtful comments and the physical abuse you are still hurting yourself because your brain can't tell a difference and neither can your heart. You are still hurting yourself and you're still decaying and aging and getting sick the same exact way. So everyone who's walking around hurting people, saying mean things, um, doing mean things, they're literally shortening their life. Right. Right. Yeah. And they're making themselves sick and their immunity is going down and it's been scientifically proven. The yeah. reason why is because um, scientifically, they've found that there is a stream of consciousness that resides in everyone right. equally. Every man, every woman, every child, every, everyone, every sentient being um, in creation has the universal one mind in it, was what Buddhists call, or what some people call God or Allah. Um, it, actually, in, um, in Islam, they call Hia as as a word for Allah, and that means Allah is inside you. So God is inside everyone. Everyone is a split fractal of the one universal mind having a human experience for its own amusement and development. Mm. And they found this scientifically to be true. Wow. So take that in, and when you see that, then you understand, okay, so I'm going to wake into the greater reality. I'm going to level up my energy. And as my ascension comes up, um, my Merkaba is going to get more developed, more condensed, and my Merkaba is going to propel me into the next experience that is a re- that's a right fit for me. And so those nuances in your reality are your way of Thing. okay I am traveling the multiverse and so if you don't like something in your reality you can change it by changing your viewpoint about it yeah right that will change your energy so all that self-help stuff that you know some people look down on is actually very powerful tools Agreed. from many traditions um, all around the world that they can use to level up their energy um, the other thing also is that many people are not raising the energy because, you know, you're already born into this reality of high frequency, but and you take on conditioning from the media, from your family, from your religions, from your careers, from all yeah. these different things, um, these conditioning and these beliefs on 
on yourself and about things. Um, they actually lower your frequency. Yeah. And so what we do in Buddhism is we, we call them unbalanced perspectives, what some abundance blocks. Um, and we use a, um, there, there's many tools. Um, they're not supposed to be indoctrinations. They're just tools to kind of help you with playing the game. Um, but we use uh, the Four Noble Truths and the Eightfold Paths. And it's a, it's a basic um, understanding of how to dissect your triggers or your issues that are lowering your frequency mm -hmm. to, so you can understand them and um, release that energy so that you can be a higher radiating person and so that your Merkaba can take you to higher and higher Next experiences. Level. So Next where, level. Where can yes. people go and read about that or find out about that? Well, there's lots of material on um, on the internet, um, but I also wrote a, another book um, called um, Buddhist Guide to Manifest Parallel Realities Using the Four Noble Truths and Eightfold Paths in um, the Age of Consciousness. Right. So it's a, it, it's, a, it's a very simple, easy book to understand um, kind of how to use that method that the first Buddha, Siddhartha, Gautama had um, developed and found through meditation that you can use those principles to your life. So let me demystify what Buddhism is because some people think it's a religion, but when you understand what it really is, it's just a philosophy. So Buddhism is, is a, a series, there's a lot of that's added to the canon and all the scientific material that we have been participating in in the last 20 years will also be added to the canon. But um, the Four Noble Truths the first noble truth is that life is suffering. If you're in this body, you're going to age and you're going to suffer a little bit. It's just part of the game. Yeah. The second one is that attachment causes suffering. So um, it is the attachment to what is that causes people suffering. It's not just attachment to physical things. You know, if you lose your house, that's going to be a little bit painful. But people are also attached to concepts, ideas, um, you know, things not they're working out the way that they want it to work or how they envision. So they're attached to those things. There's a lot of ways people are attached to it. And that's what causes the suffering. Um, the third one is insights remove suffering. So if you kind of like see the full picture from all the perspectives of how it transpired, um, you would understand and not be so angry or resentful. Mm. And the fourth one is uh, living the eightfold path ends suffering so the eightfold path which is the eight rods in the wheel of dharma <laughs> in my merkaba <laughs> um the eightfold path is correct thought um you know are you having the correct thought about the situation are you thinking about it correctly um correct speech are you speaking about it correctly are you constantly saying negative things and kind of uh yes. sabotaging yourself right. um correct action are you taking the appropriate action to work towards manifesting and creating what you want mm -hmm. um correct livelihood are you living in a way that's conducive to that success or that outcome um correct understanding do you understand it in a way are you understanding the full picture um correct effort are you making the effort are you just sitting there and hoping something's going to happen but are you actually making the efforts to manifesting and working on the next experience that you want to create. Um, the seventh one is correct concentration. When you're in the game, are you concentrating or are you just thinking about something else and having an accident? <laughs> um, and then the last one is correct mindfulness. Are you being mindful of the situation? Right. So that's Buddhism. Mm. And we talk That's Buddhism. about all of this. Right. Exactly. Just in different terminology. Exactly. Yeah. There is no new, uh, in Buddhism, we always say there is nothing new. We just rediscover wisdom That's in right. different ways. Nothing new under the sun. Right. Nothing new under the sun. And, there's, and there are multiple pathways that lead down the rabbit hole to nirvana. And not everyone's going to go down the same path. And that's okay. Yes, mm. that's right. It's okay. That's part of their journey. That's part yes. of their journey. So we're just about coming to the end here because you know what? Most people have an attention span of a half an hour. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, so you know what? I think what is, is a good idea. Let's uh, 
Will you tell them about your book? Do you have a copy there to show them? Yeah, I do. I do. Um, let me go to these awesome. two. So and here, then, and then we want to know where they can go and find your books. Okay, so this one is um, Buddhist Guide to Manifest Parallel Realities. Right. Okay, and on the back, it has a picture of my daughter that's been running in here to get <laughs> stuff. <laughs> oh, that's cute. So, um, and then the one that I just recently um, published, and, and actually this, the, the Buddhist Guide to Manifest Parallel Realities is a good simple manual of understanding the basic principles um, that the first Buddha, Siddhartha, had um, brought to the canon um, for addressing those issues that bring down your frequency and keep you stuck in the lower dimensions, like nice. the third dimension that we're trying to move away from. Um, so that's a good one for that. So if you have those triggers in your life, you probably have something to address and that could help with that. Um, this one is my recent one. And this one is um, Buddhist mandalas, explore parallel realities with sacred geometry. And um, it has the beautiful Fima Buddha, Kuan Yin, yeah. And she's a bodhisattva of compassion. Um, and she usually comes in times of healing, and she really helps women empower themselves mm. within the matrix. Okay. So um, she's more kind of like a mother love. <laughs> yeah. But, um, and then, of course, there's the back, and this one has my son <laughs> in it. And my children love to be on, on the book. So um, that's the, this one I had, so much information in 20 years that I actually had to break it into three volumes. So wow. this is the first book. I wrote this one during the, pande during the pandemic. Yeah. And I'm hoping to finish this, the second book by Christmas. And then hopefully by sometime next year, I'll finally finish the third book and get into my um, other book project, which I really had a table because I had to get this finished. Wow. Wow. You've been really, really busy getting your information out to the world. Right. Yes, yes. And I, and I want to leave with this really quick. Cause, um, yes. So, you know, because we've kind of covered ascension and awakening and basic understandings of it and that everybody has a Merkaba and go see your Merkaba. Um, and, you know, as you get into this space, you're going to come into your six senses um, just naturally. And so, you know, some of the six senses that you'll come into naturally is the ability to kind of... Um, be empathic on other people, maybe hear some thoughts that aren't your thoughts. Um, you may have um, some ability to um, do some energy healing. There's a lot of different six senses. And so there's a lot of resources to help you with that, but that will start happening. And the other thing that we Buddhists really want everybody to know is that we have entered the fifth dimension and we're going to further go into these higher parallel realities and deeper into the fifth dimension as we you know go as we move forward yeah. and the reason why is because um we're going to kind of time travel back to 2012 okay remember that 2012 year is kind of funny um so in between 2010 and 2012 um many indigenous tribes around the world such as the, the chiefs of the easter islands native american chiefs mayan chiefs buddhists we did what they call an awakening ceremony and they didn't really do anything you know spectacular they just did a ceremony that they waited thousands of years to do and what it typically did sammy i'm in the middle of a interview yes i do remember the movie but you need to go talk to daddy about it i don't know it's called dinosaurs go talk to daddy about it okay we'll talk about it afterwards i tell you she's five going on 15. <laughs> so, yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah. That, that's what they do. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, but let me just close this up about the awakening ceremonies. So, many indigenous tribes did, did these awakening ceremonies, and what they really did was they closed out the cycle of separation, seeing separatism between people, and welcoming the cycle of unity consciousness, seeing unity and oneness with everybody. Right. And um, and then we waited for earth to see what was going to happen and after looking at 20 years of scientific research i feel pretty confident to say that we have scientific research that we're moving into the fifth dimension through what they call earth's schumann resonance okay um it is 
the Global Conscious Project held at Princeton University um, and a couple other institutions that also helped collaborate and, and get this project going, what they wanted to do is find out if Earth is alive and if sh she responds to us. Right. And after 20 years of research and seeing data after data for event after event, what they found is those are true. Um, the earth is alive and she does respond to the heart energy of all these millions of people in different areas of the world. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, you know, it predicted 9-11 four hours before it happened. It predicted Hurricane Katrina. It predicted all these different natural events and also some social events as well um, because the earth feels that and if she wants to respond she's going to respond and whenever they had these spikes in the random number generators what they found um, around the world is something's going to happen so much like animals in the wild when they feel the energy has changed and a tsunami is going to happen they start going for high ground and they don't know why Yep. People are the same way and we do the same thing. We act like animals that feel anxiety, restlessness, backache, can't sleep, you know, all these other um, effects that we have. And they typically happen when the earth has these electromagnetic spikes. Mm -hmm. And you can see it scientifically. And I've been watching this for 20 years scientifically. Um, and they have all the data on that website, which is um, newsphere, uh, newsphere.princeton.org. EDU. You can look at 20 years of evidence from event after event after event. The interesting thing about this and the reason why I bring this up is because what they found is um, like Alex, I'm going to miss his name, Chivesky, he studied solar sun cycles and what he found is that when these peaks happen, um, there were major wars and at the same time major renaissance that was happening. And he, he found that in 70, 72 countries that he researched during these spikes, 80% mm -hmm. of these events happen at this time. So what that tells us, and this is what's happening and what I think is happening as well, scientifically, is that it's kind of like the analogy of when you are um, in a boat and you're sailing. You're sailing like you normally do. And when the pins, the wind slowly picks up, you're still sailing the way you do. And then all of a sudden this huge whoosh of wind comes and more whooshes come and you're still doing the same thing and frustrated trying to figure out why is it not sailing the way you want. Well, what you need to realize is that energy has changed and you can't sail the same way. You can't sail right. in the same third dimensional way. You have to be fifth dimensional. So you have to lift your sails up you have to get the whole crew together and you got to roll through it together in unity. And that's how you're going to take those knots and go from one part of the earth to another part of the earth, which hopefully is beautiful and tropical. And that's what's changed. The energy has changed. And we know the energy has changed scientifically because the Schumann resonance is typically 7.83 7 hertz. And she's picking up speed to 20, 30, 40, 60. She's picking up these huge huge leaps just like the wind is making the wishes so everyone is getting frustrated because when these energy changes what happens is it, it it pulls all the gunk from the bottom of the sea all the way up so you can transmute it and then get to the good stuff so everyone's inner demons and their dark night of the souls are going to come up at these higher higher frequencies because everything moves faster in higher frequencies it's going to come up so much faster and you're going to have to start dealing with it and dealing with these abundance blocks and these repressed issues because they're going to hit you so much faster and they're going to get worse and worse and worse until you fix it because you can't take them with you to these higher energies into the fifth dimension so you, you know because everything because the, the earth and the energy has no opinion of what's right or wrong or good or bad. It's just an amplifier. And it's the biggest magnetic that is affecting us, which is the earth. And it's just going to amplify what you are. Mm -hmm. So what they found in the study is that, like they said, when they did the study and they looked at history, 
of 72 countries, you had renaissance and you had wars at the same time during these spikes. And so in your personal life, you can choose to have a renaissance when these spikes happen or when these energies are up and be more creative, have more abundance, create more things, things just happen more synchronicity. Um, and so you have a different kind of issue of balancing that, or you can have your internal wars in your life. You get to pick. That's okay, right. that's the tools that we get to use in the fifth dimension. So it can be heaven on earth or it can be hell every day. <laughs> well, you know, I think it's uh, been fantastic. And there's so much information in this interview. Wow. And, and we really haven't even scratched the surface. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I know. So I've... Let's, uh, let's sign off with that much. And I think maybe another interview is in order and we can talk about something else. Uh, yes, yes. Oh, and really quick, my books, um, just go to Amazon and type in Von Galt yes. and click on the author name and I'll pull up all my books and you can find my Buddhism books that way. And also all my information is on my website, Merkaba Chakras, M-E-R-K-A-B-A -A Chakras, like your seven chakras dot com. And you'll have a wealth of information there as well. And we'll put that all in the show notes as well for awesome. you. Awesome but you are a wealth of information. We have a lot to take in. I've written two pages of notes here. <laughs> and it's so interesting that, you know, you can go to soundmadevisible.com. Oh, I want to see your Merkaba. I want to see both of your Merkabas. Maybe the next time we'll, we'll take a look. And I, I, I have a feeling they are very identical. <laughs> <laughs> so, maybe next time maybe maybe you're you'll have your husband fight. yes and we can we can compare like, you know it would be funny if they made a site where they um they match people's merkabas like, <laughs> like you're also and you're also here you it, it'd, make it, it'd make a trillion dollars uh, <laughs> it would be so funny yeah. oh we'll see it, it will be very it will be very interesting um what like dating will look like down the road <laughs> if yes. everybody starts showing their Merkabas. <laughs> thank, thank you so much. Yes, You're we welcome. appreciate your time and your all your wisdom. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Take care, guys. Okay. Thanks for tuning in at Brood Awakening. If you found this episode inspiring today, please rate, review, and subscribe to our podcast and help us reach a greater audience to inspire more people. Or if you have a question you'd like us to answer on the show, please send us a line at info at broodawakeningpodcast.com. Again, that's info at broodawakeningpodcast.com. So let's miraculously transform the world together. Until next time, enjoy your coffee. And remember, wake up and live.